Kelly and I live in Hindley Green. I've got two Border Collies, male for your male, Bonnie and Clyde. Bonnie's two and Clyde's two as well. We like to work on Bonnie chases her tail. She's very reactive to new people or strangers, you know, people she, she doesn't know. And Clyde, he chases his like shadow, he chases shadows and lights and things like that. Hi, I'm Amelia, a professional dog trainer and behavioural specialist. In my brand new series, we'll be travelling across the UK to help pet parents in need. No matter what the behavioural problem is, I'm here to help. Cool, well, it's so lovely to meet you. Yeah, Thank you so nice much you. for having us. Um, so, do you want to start off by just giving me a little bit of background on Bonnie and Clyde? Yeah, sure. Um, we got them from Smithles mm -hmm. Hall Farm right. in Bolton. So, we got them, we picked them up when they were eight week old. Um, and then, at first, they, were, they didn't have any issues. Right. They were fine. Um, there was an incident where um, we went to my brother-in-law's, mm -hmm. um, and first time they were meeting... Um, the dog, German Shepherd, um, and we went in, and we didn't think it, but he was proper, like, reactive towards Bonnie and Clyde, and he was right, barking. Right, right. And then, after that, not straight away, but we started noticing that she was reactive to dogs. Right, okay. Um, and it was quite intense um, at first. I think because we didn't know why and yeah. why she was like that. Um, so she'd lunge and bark and she'd try and like snap at them, but obviously we didn't let them. Yeah. As well as that, really don't know how it started, but she just started chasing the tail and then she'd just grab it and bite onto it. Right, okay. Um, and it was to the point where it was just wet through at the oh, end of her tail. Um, and a few times she made it bleed. Right. So we went to the vets and they just examined it, but they didn't go into like any why she was, like, doing, why it. She was yeah. doing it. There was like, oh, just distract her and things. Um, so then I got in touch with a trainer mm -hmm. um, about the reactivity in the chasing tail. And um, he, with the chasing tail, he was like, just distract her. Right. Um, or just put her in another room, shut right. the door, just don't give her any attention. Um, but that didn't, because obviously you had to get her attention to put her in the other room. Yeah. Uh, or to like distract her. Um, but as soon as you did that, she'd just go back to spinning again. Right, okay. And I read up about dog anxiety, mm -hmm. canine anxiety. Yeah. And I'm like, I think that might be what she's got. So, anyway, I took her back to the vets and I mentioned about anxiety. Mm -hmm. And they were like, oh, it could be. Um, she said, but we'd maybe not try medication yet, try herbal. Right, okay. Like herbal tablets and things. So I, I tried all sorts. Mm -hmm. I tried um, Dor West herb. Yeah. Um, oh, what was, was it? There was Valerian and Valerian, Skullcap, is yeah, it? Yeah. yeah. Um, there was on Facebook, there's a group with herbal pet, um, and it was like chill drops that that seemed to calm her down a bit, but right, it okay. didn't. Yeah, it, it didn't, wasn't enough. It wasn't yeah. enough. The reactivity, like when, when I went to the trainer with the reactivity, mm -hmm. he was like, right, do it from afar yeah. first. Um, get the distance so close you can get, and then start from there. And then, um, so I had been doing that. It does seem to, especially because she's on these tablets now. Yeah. It doesn't seem as bad. That's good. That's, so that's good. But yeah. there's still reactivity there. Yeah, okay. Um, and especially with people, that doesn't seem to be getting any better. Right. But I think, because we don't really meet new people. Yeah, okay. Because um, obviously, especially with her reactivity to dogs, I've mm -hmm. not been going near dog walkers. Right, so okay. So she can't have that interaction. Yeah, okay. Um, so... But, like I said, she's getting better. Yeah, that's good. So you've brought us in today to help with a couple of things. Yes. So for Bonnie, it's the reactivity to people coming into the house and being scared of strangers and new people. Yeah. Um, and then also for Clyde, his chasing shadows, which we could see as soon as we walked in. He was very yeah. fixated. Yeah. So do you want to tell me a little bit more about those problems? Let's start with the shadow chasing. Tell yeah. me a little bit about that. Of course. Um, last... Quite a few months ago, mm -hmm. um, my husband, with his laser, 
measure mm -hmm. light thing. Um, it came on accidentally. So Clyde saw it on the ground. Yeah. She started like pouncing. So then it became a game then, like playing. Right. And it was just playful. Yeah. He, you know, he stopped. It didn't seem to have an issue. Um, but every time my husband came home from work, he knew he'd... So we were looking right. for the pen. Um, so he kept doing it and then I was like, no, maybe we should stop. He was like, oh no, it's harmless. Yeah, um, okay. So, and then he did eventually stop doing it. But in, it, like, as you've seen, it can yeah. get quite intense with it. Yeah, it's very intense, isn't it? He just yeah. isn't, isn't like giving in, is no, he? He's properly no, chasing the shadows that's around That's it, him. and he'll get like yeah. upset and mm. agitated. And if I do distract him with the ball, he'll find he'll go and get it. Yeah, But okay. then he'll soon get back onto it. Right, okay. Um, or if I stop him, mm -hmm. and he's just like, like really had to take yeah it. okay have you ever heard of laser pointer syndrome no okay so when you play with something like a laser pointer with the dog what happens is it initiates their prey drive and with dogs they really struggle to switch off from that once right. they've gone into that mindset so right. they they don't forget about it basically so until they've caught that thing or they can see where it's gone they're not likely to give up right so when you play with a laser pointer and then it disappears it can create a almost a kind of OCD in dogs where they become very obsessive over anything right. like that lights or they're looking for the pen and oh the laser right. pen. Um, and it's it's more common than you think because not a lot of people realise the damage mm. that can be no. done with playing with a laser pen. Yeah, um, so it definitely sounds like that could have something right. to do with it. Um, are you still using the laser pen with him or have you stopped that now? No, I've stopped that Okay, now. that's good. Yeah. yeah, so I think the first thing we would do in any case with something like this is stop that so stop yeah playing with the laser pen okay. or even things like lights you know right. getting him to chase lights and things like yeah. that yeah yeah definitely well another thing that could obviously influence it is it's winter so it's darker so you're probably mm. more likely to have the lights on yeah that's do you true. find that it's worse when you've got like overhead lights on or lamps on in the house yes yeah okay yeah, cool definitely. so another really easy sort of quick win for that is just to shut off the lights when you don't right. need them on so that he's not becoming super fixated right. okay um because a lot of the time with with behaviors like this they're obsessive and obviously compulsive so what happens is they become obsessed with performing those behaviors right. so the more that they do it the more likely they are to keep doing it over right. and over again right. Makes sense. yeah so a really easy quick thing to do is just when you don't need them on switch the lights off so that right. he's not then obsessing over oh, it okay. so yeah before we get into the training piece and look at putting these um, management systems in place i think it'd be really good to dig into their history a little bit and make sure there's nothing else that could be influencing these behaviors right so tell me a little bit about what they were like as puppies. They was hard work. Yeah. Definitely hard work. Okay. Because <laughs> um, I'd, I'd watched like training videos, right. but that was mainly one dog. Right. It didn't really go into how, what you do with the other dog when you're training right. what the other dog. And so I found it quite difficult. The, like the potty training, yeah. that was hard. Because um, to take them both out at the same time, but then it'd be like playtime. Oh, I see. Um, so then, if I took one out and left the other one in the crate, yep. then they'd have an accident in the crate. Oh no! Um, and vice versa. So it, the potty training did take quite. A, yeah. I think they were like seven months. Oh really? Right. Yeah. When, that's... when yeah, 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 yeah. And I felt like a failure. Oh really? Like, oh. I'm like, and my mum kept saying, "Well, why can't they?" I was. Um, they, they were like yeah. potty trained in like so many months or by, and I was like, well, because I've got two, it's difficult. Yeah, it's much harder. Yeah, and they just couldn't understand. It's so hard as well, and I think people don't realise as well because everyone else tells you, my dog's great, my dog's done this, my dog's done that. But you, yeah. it's interesting because you're saying about seven months being late to be toilet trained. Mm -hmm. That's about average for most right. people, but what tends to happen is you get this feedback loop of everyone around you is going, well, my dog was trained at this age, and yeah. you go online, oh, my dog's brilliant. It's like, you know, people comparing their kids or something. That's it, yeah. So it makes you feel really, like, isolated almost, doesn't it's, it? Yeah, like, oh, exactly. what am I That's doing wrong? I yeah. And That's I think it. so many people feel like that, especially when you go on the internet and everything tells you different, totally yeah. different things, right? Yeah. You Google one thing and one website will tell you do this and the next website will say don't do the same thing that's so it yeah it does get really confusing for yeah. people i think um, and when got in touch with the trainer mm -hmm. he was like because i was finding it so difficult i'd sometimes cry on the phone to him and i'd be just overwhelmed yeah and he he said right you need to decide you have a keep them both yeah 
and even though I was training, putting more training in, or you need to make the hard decision of keeping right. one and getting rid of the other hand. Uh, How did that make you feel? Mortified. Oh. I, I was like, like, which one do you choose? And I'm like, I couldn't, yeah, I couldn't awful, live with the thought that we'd have them and then we'd let one of them yeah. go somewhere and I'd be constantly thinking, are they all right? And yeah. I, I couldn't. I couldn't do it. Yeah, well, I'm glad you made the decision to keep them because yeah. they're lovely dogs, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, and I, I genuinely think having, obviously I've spoken to you about Bonnie, we've met Clyde, you know, Clyde's lovely, so sweet. And, you know, the things that Bonnie is struggling with are definitely things we can work through. Right. So that's good. don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> um, the good thing is though, I think you've obviously got the foundations there so we can definitely yeah. build on that. Um, but I imagine there's a lot of people who'll be watching this that will have gone through the exact same thing. Yeah. So if anything, at least you know you're not alone. Yeah, that that's Because that's what I used to think. I think yeah. this, it's me. Yeah. I've done something. Um, and like, and when you see dogs out in public, you're like, oh, there's yeah. behaving, not behaving like that and things like that. And it's yeah. just, it's just overwhelming. It, it, it really is. And you know, I think that's why it's so important to talk about these things yeah, so that everyone it. knows, you know, if, if, that if I'm going through it, so is mm. loads of other people because you only ever see the good dogs out and about on yeah, a walk, right? That's so it. that's what makes it hard. Yeah, definitely. And how much socialisation did you do with them? I thought I did quite a lot. Yeah, but okay. Obviously, I don't think I did. <laughs> <laughs> Was it COVID or after COVID that you got them? Oh, no, just after. Right, okay, okay. But... Yeah. Yeah. Okay. After. Yeah. So they're they're probably. It sounds like they're they've had good socialization and everything. So there could be loads of different reasons why Bonnie is nervous. It right. could be that she's had a bad experience. It could be that, you know, something has maybe she's had pain at some point where she's right. like twinged a muscle or something and someone's been near her and that's caused her to be nervous right it might be that you didn't have many people in and out of your house at the time yeah, when they were puppies so. and it might just be that Clyde is more tolerant than Bonnie and that's why he's super chilled right. and she's yeah, nervous um but yeah I think with the reactivity to people the best way to address that is to create a really clear and consistent routine that happens every single time somebody comes into the house. Right. It doesn't have to be complicated. What I like to do is literally have the guests come in, the dog's behind a baby gate, and then either you can stand and throw food while they're there and then they leave, or the person comes in and throws food. Right. So that she knows, okay, while someone comes in, one, there's no pressure to interact because they're not going to be sticking their hands in her face or trying to fuss or anything like that. It's just, right. I'm going to stay away from you, throw food and totally leave you alone. Yeah. And then she learns, okay, people come in, they give me great things and then they go again. Right. Um, but that learning doesn't happen until that person's left. So even if someone's right. been here for a really long time, she, you probably won't see much of a change until they've gone and come back again because she's oh. still looking at them thinking, oh, you could do something still. Right. Whereas once they've gone away, she knows, oh, actually, they didn't do anything bad the whole time right. they were there. Okay. So we'll have a practice of that today and see how she gets on. Yeah. Um, and then we will work on the outs as well for their right. tail chasing mm -hmm. and light chasing as okay. well. Yeah, that sounds good. Cool. So if you're ready, we'll go ahead and get yes. started. Yeah, ready. Awesome. Yeah. So we talked about setting a routine in place. So all I'm doing here is throwing treats to them, badly by the looks of it. Um, go get that one. And this is just to show them that, okay, if I come through the door, I'm a new person. I'm only ever going to give them something good. Right. So my goal isn't to go up to them. I don't need to interact with Bonnie. I don't need to put my hand in her face or stroke her or anything like that. It's just simply about showing her, okay, I'm going to leave you alone and you're going to get good things right. from me. Okay. And so let's say, I'll throw this to her and I'll help him get that treat. I know, I'm sorry. There we go. So let's say someone new comes in. It can be really tempting to kind of get them to interact with her. Because yeah. humans want to go, I'm okay, I'm okay. And then they put their hands out, stick their hands in their face. But instead, I'm just going to show, actually, I'm not going to go anywhere near Bye. you. I'm going to throw the treats yeah. and then leave you alone. And I would do this the first few times. Right someone comes in and I wouldn't bring her out until that until she is totally comfortable with them walking right. in. And you know, dogs will always have a bit of a bark, but you can definitely yeah. tell the difference between Clyde's woohoo, someone's here barking yeah. and Bonnie's, you know, I'm stressed that yeah. someone new is, is yeah. here. No 
So she's tending to hang back away from the gate, which is actually a really good thing. Because right. when they go into fight or flight like that, she's got a choice. I can either hang back and stay away and observe, or I can come up and run up to you and, you know, defend myself right. by attacking you, basically. Right. So the fact that she's sort of hanging back and not right at the gate barking and barking is, is a good sign. Oh, and right, and you can good. see already she's very quickly gone, all right, actually, I'm, I'm going to calm down. Yeah. You could definitely see that she's not totally happy because you can see she's panting quite a bit and, right. you know, she's pacing about. But yeah. over time, if we do this, it's going to show her that actually when someone new comes in, they're only ever going to get good things. Right. Because, uh-huh. um, again, that, that tendency to want to interact with them... It, adds what we call social pressure and that's actually a negative thing for nervous dogs so my goal isn't to throw the treats until she's coming up to me it's just to throw her the treats and then leave her alone because then she'll learn okay actually you're safe you're all good oh Oh, good job and a really good gauge as well is whether or not she's eating the treats because when we very (laughs) first came in she wasn't eating them she was leaving them that's it yeah So the fact that she's now eating them, even though she's taken them away from the gate, shows us that she's not too stressed because she can can eat, she can eat that food. So, and this is a really nice, easy thing to do. And, you know, it doesn't require loads of like training or other. (laughs) And then, so let's say I was uh, someone visiting, you could then go and sit in the living room and she could stay in there until that person had visited a good few times so that she knows, okay, actually that person just comes and goes and leaves me alone. Okay. Good job. I'll get one to Clyde as well because he's sitting so nicely. Yeah, good. Now, another mistake people make is they go and stick their hands out. So mm. what I don't want to be doing is grabbing a tree and trying to feed them like this. Right. Because if I stick my hand in her face, she might decide, well, it's worth it for the food, but then there's a hand in her face. Right. So she's taken the food, there's a hand there, and it increases the risk of them biting. Right, yeah. So it's always throwing it. Okay. And again, I'm not right up to the gate, I'm standing back here right. for a reason. Yeah. And that's so that she feels like she's got plenty of space, and again, she can feel like, okay, I can, I can trust you now. Right, okay. Good and job. Now we'll just put her in a crate. Oh. Right. In a different room, so she can't actually see yeah. the person. So. And that's that's fine. That's a good management strategy. Yeah. But ultimately, we want to make sure that she can see people and feel okay. Yeah, that's it. And that's why it's important to have the baby gate there. You might want to get a slightly higher one. <laughs> um, <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> but it's, it's just so that, worst case, if she's uncomfortable with someone coming in, she can't run up to them and right. panic. Yeah. I genuinely don't think she would bite based on her body language. Right. She's much more flighty. Like she, out, out, When she jumped over the gate, she had a choice. She could either run in there or come up to us, and yeah. she chose to run in there and hide, yeah. which shows that she's got more of a tendency to try and get away. Right. which might not sound like a good thing but it's better than her yeah, coming up and that's trying true. to bite yeah, someone definitely. <laughs> so does he normally do that to her? yeah right so that is a redirection of frustration right. in that situation. So he's frustrated that he can't come out and say hi right. so he's turning and snapping at her because um. she's the closest thing to him. So it... it <laughs> might just be the case that if you do have people come round, you get him out and leave yeah, him there. because he's fine. Yeah. People. Yeah. <laughs> sit. Do they, I'm assuming they know sit. Yeah. So I'm going to see if... I'll take a bow. Good boy. <laughs> good boy. So another really good way to gauge how they're feeling is to ask them for really simple things that they know, like a sit and see if they listen. Right. Ready, sit. Good boy. Because you see how he's doing it, she's not. That might just be the case that he feels comfortable and... Oh, good Oh, Oh, sorry, right on your head there. Good job. And then if I wanted to, we can just take one step closer and do the same thing. Right. The other thing I'm never going to do is face on like this because you see how immediately that's a confrontation or she's moving away so it's always side on with a new dog side on throwing the food and then not making hard eye contact either because if I sit and stare at her she's going to feel like I'm putting a lot of pressure on her so anytime you have guests in ask them to stand side on throw the treat and then look away from her and then after if you've got somebody that's a, a guest, you don't have to get them to do it for this long. You could just get them to do a few treats and then oh, go right. and sit down. But right. while we're here, we might as well make the most yeah, of it. Yeah, definitely. Um, um, and then 
over time, like I say, if you do this, this is a really simple exercise, but over time she's going to think, hey, anytime someone walks through that door, it is good news right. for me. All right, definitely try that. Well, we'll be doing And if you can't trust the person <clears throat> that is here to do this properly, then all you do is have them stand back and you throw the treats instead so oh, that right. you're controlling the situation. Right. Oh, okay. So if it's yeah. someone where you're like, oh, they're just not listening to what I'm saying, just, I would have you stood here, then stood over there, and then you can throw the treats. Because right. as long as they learn they're getting something good while that person is here, then right. that's the yeah, main thing. Yeah. And this is one of those things where it doesn't necessarily translate through to outside. So with the reactivity piece, we obviously talked about training that separately. Yeah. So we'll give you access to our membership platform so that you can go ahead and train the reactivity oh, as well. That's good. Thank you. Um, but you'll probably mm. find that once you get all these pieces together, and her anxiety overall will calm down because if she feels right. good in the house, secure with people coming in and good out on a walk, you'll probably find that that anxiety will start to come down and the, right. and the tail chasing oh, will get right. better That's as well. Yeah. So would you say this behaviour, would you say it's like genetic? Oh. Most likely. Right. So obviously there's many things that influence behaviour. Genetics is a big one. Right. So because we know they're related, they've obviously got the same genetics pretty yeah. much. So if we're seeing common behaviours in the two of them, it could either be they've learnt it off each other or it could be genetic. Right. With something like the light chasing, because that's developed independently of each other and in different behaviours, right. it's probably that the neurological cause for it is genetic and it's presenting differently right. in each dog. Okay. Um, and, you know, another thing you can do as well is play with the ball over the gate. So if I just sit here and throw the ball and they realise I'm good fun, I'm not yeah, going to do anything, right. that's another good way to build that relationship. Right. Okay. Yeah, so you can see it's, this is what she normally does. Yeah. So what we can look at doing now is teaching them that out cue and working on that. Okay. So what I'm going to get you to do is let me and you will go and there with her and start doing that training okay so what if you're in the situation where you've got a guest coming through you want to take charge of the situation so i'm going to get you to take the treats and start throwing them away i'll walk in and then i'll stop and stand okay. still yep so now that we've worked with bonnie on her reactivity to people coming in let's start addressing this shadow chasing and tail chasing yeah so given that clyde is more comfortable with us we'll do the training with him and yep. then you can practice the same thing with bonnie later yep okay so we're going to start by teaching an out cue, which is basically out means come to me and you're going to get something good. Right. And this is to break that fixation when they get into it. When you're using it in real life, good boy, what I like to do is pair it with something else. So it's not just out, get the treat, then go back to what you were doing. I would redirect straight onto a different behavior. Right, okay. So it might be out to treat and then give them a chew toy. Right. Or out, give them a treat and then ask them to go on their bed or something like that. Right, okay. Do you ever do anything with them like licky mats or Kongs or snuffle mats? Um, snuffle mats, mm -hmm. interactive games. Yeah, nice, um, okay, cool. Yeah, all that. Cool, so I particularly like to use things that incorporate licking because licking helps to calm the brain. So right. a really good option um, would be something like a lick mat because right. you can just put something like peanut butter or a bit of yogurt or a bit of dog food on there, pop it down for him and it will just help to calm his brain down right. when he gets into right. this state of mind. So that might be a good option. Yeah. So let's teach the out because we can see he's getting himself quite stressed yeah. out. So all I'm going to do to start with, out, and then hand him a piece of food. Out. Good boy. Out. Good job. Out. Good boy. And I'm going to keep repeating this. Out. Good boy. Out. Because you can see already he's like, oh, I know that means yeah. food. Yeah. Out. Good boy. And it's it's not something we have to worry about rewarding. So a lot of people worry, oh, you know, well, if he's chasing shadows and I say out and give him a piece of food, am I rewarding him for yeah. it? But this is what we call, um, this is not a choice behaviour. So this isn't what we call operant behaviour. Right. Operant behaviour is choice-based behaviour that is then rewarded with a consequence. Uh. So let's say sit. He does a sit and then he does that because he knows he gets a treat. He's choosing to sit. Right. Right now, this isn't choice. This is purely an emotional reaction to the environment. He's right. not thinking, oh, I fancy chasing the shadow. No. He can't control this. Right. Okay. Out. Good boy. So it's really important that we just interrupt it as quickly as possible so that it doesn't become obsessive. So again, yeah. out. 
And if he doesn't look to me straight away, I'm still going to make sure I get that food to him. Right. Because I want him to still think that out means something good. Okay. Out! Good boy. Oh, good bow. And I'm going to try to feed him off the floor because I don't want him, again, fixating uh, on the floor. Yeah. Out! Out! And at this stage of training, again, I don't expect him to do anything. It's just out means food. Right. Okay. Ready? Out! So do you want to take over and yes. give it a go? Mm -hmm. So a nice clear out and then get the food to him. Out. Out. There we go. Goodbye. Clyde. So just go straight to out. out. There we go. Clyde. Out. <laughs> Okay, so while he's in this mood, let's try something a bit different. Because right. really, when we're working on the out, we want him to be receptive to it. Yeah, it's just not doing it. So, that. if he gets into this state where he's pacing around, he can't stop himself, we're going to try and do something to just break that focus. So rather than repeating the out over and over again right now, I'm just going to start by just feeding him a little bit of food. Right. And I'm going to pinch it in my fingers so he has to really work to get it. So right. that we're just taking his mind off what he's doing. Because yeah. you can see it's just that repetitive cycle that he's in. That's it. So we want to do something for long enough so that he's not having to get stuck in that mindset. Yeah. Does he know leave it? Yes. Cool. So leave it is a good one to do with some food. Hey. Ready? Leave it. Because it requires a bit of focus. Right. And if he starts focusing on my hand, it gives him something else to think yeah. about. Yes. Good boy. Ready? That's it. Leave it. Oh, you got your ball. Oh. We'll take the ball. Good job. We'll take the ball. Good boy. And then now he's a little bit calmer, now is a good time to start practicing the out again. Okay. So I'll give you the ball so that he's focused on you, and then okay. do you want to start doing repetitions yeah. of the out again? Out. There we go. Oh. Out. Good. Out. Go. There we go. I'm going to give you another game to do as well, just again for when he's in this sort of mindset. So... This game is called the up and down game, okay. and the goal is to get their focus on you, but it's ideally to get their focus off the floor and up to your eyes. Right. So, I'm going to start down at his level. What's this? And I'm, what I'm actually looking for here is eye contact. So I'm going to try and get him looking up at me rather than down on the floor. Right. Because you can see as soon as his eyes are on the floor, that's when he's fixating yeah. on everything. Yeah. Ready? So I'm going to give him a hand. I'm going to lure his eyes up. Oh, what you got? So we'll use the ball, that's okay. So I'm going to pop the ball behind my back. Yes. And then when he looks up into my eyes, yes, and he gets okay. the treat. Good job. Yes. Yes, good boy. Good job. And then I'm going to start adding a cue. So I'm going to say, look at me. Yes. Good job. Look at me. Yes. Good job. Look at me. Yes. Good job. And then once he's getting the hang of it, I'll see if he can do it while I'm standing up. Okay. Ready? Oh, thank you. Look at me. So I'm going to give him a hand. Yes. Good job. Catch. Good boy. Whoa. Ready? Look at me. Yes, good boy. You want the ball? No, okay. Not. You can have the ball. Good job. Go get it. Go get it. And then what we'll do is, <laughs> when you practice this at home, when we're not here, yeah. have all the lights off so that he's not then getting right. distracted. And what you can do is almost get into a pattern of up and down. So 
he looks in your eyes, yes, you put the treat down on the floor and then right. you do it in a round okay. like that. Yeah. Um, but for now, it's anything that can, yes, good boy, anything that can take his attention away from the floor. So right. look at me, out, anything like that that sort of, you know, eyes up here, yeah. not on the floor. Yeah. Okay. And if you want to, you can pair the out with look at me. So it's out first and then do a few right. rounds of look at me. Okay. Um, I'm also going to um, recommend that you speak to the vet about it in a bit more detail. Because with behaviours like this, it's not always solvable 100% through training. Right. So you might find that he might benefit from some kind of medication or something right. like that that okay. helps as well. Yeah. But we'll write you a referral. So if you send us your vet's details, we can right. write you a referral so that they can take you seriously about it. Because okay. it's so hard sometimes to get them to listen to yes, you about behaviours like this. So yeah. Yeah. We'll, um, we'll get it looked at and make sure that there's nothing that we're yeah. missing. Okay. Um, so, does that all make sense? Yes. Yeah. Cool. So, should we have another little practice of the out? I tell you what, do you want yeah. to, in fact, let's do the look at me, and do you want to do the look at me with this ball? Yeah. So, you can squeak it just to get his attention if, if you need to. Do you want me to crouch? Is no, you don't have to. You can, you can just... Look at me. Goodbye. There you go. And what I would do is it'd be a little bit clearer with your look at me. Yeah. Look at me. Yes. There we go. Oh. And then once you've had a good practice of this, then we'll switch the lights off so that he can't right. then carry on yeah. running around after the shadows. Okay. And then it'll take a little bit of time, but the more you practice when you don't need it, the quicker he's likely to respond right. when you do need it. Okay. Um, so I would just start putting those things into like your day-to-day -day routine for yeah. both of them yeah. so that when you need to call them out of that, you can stop it. Right. And then, like I said, I would just, the other, only other thing I would make sure is that they're getting enough rest so that they're sleeping enough between the two of them. Yeah. Because I would say for their breed, being high energy and you can see you know I think both of them probably get quite pent up yeah I would try and do an hour for each of them of something so right. that doesn't have to be a full hour walking each you could do half an hour walk yeah. and then play or something like that and then outside of that I would just do calm things because right. if you can sort of compartmentalize it at times of the day it stops them from just randomly you know waking up right. and feeling really super stimulated yeah. throughout the day because ideally what you want is those chunks of time where they're exercising and doing their activities and then the rest of the day it's calm settled right. going to sleep okay. and that'll just help so that they don't get into mindsets like this where yeah. it's just sort of like really like everything's going on it's all exciting and you can see he's then getting yeah it gets really fixated yeah, definitely. so what i would do is start implementing those things into your day-to-day -day. so people come in the house practice that routine that we talked about yeah. for the chasing and the um tail chasing that bonnie has it's really important to practice those behaviours when you don't need them because, like right. I say, if you only ever use it when, when they're in that mindset, it's really difficult for them to listen. Right. Whereas we want yeah. them to just be on autopilot. We want them to feel like, oh, I've done this so many times. Yeah. I know exactly what yeah. we're doing. Because you can see he's, he's all right at first and then he just gets... Gets really fixated. Really fixated. Yeah. 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 Um, but I think get these things sorted first and, and then I think everything will be much easier. Yeah. Oh, oh. <laughs> you managed to get right in there then. There we go. Um, so does that all make sense yes. in terms of what you're working yeah, on? Yeah, cool. Definitely. And do you have any questions? Um, no, I think you've covered everything cool. really. Yeah. Awesome. So, yeah, it's just I need to get started on yeah. doing the training. Cool. Um, but honestly, you've done so well with both of them. Oh, As you. is, they're great dogs. <laughs> so I oh, think a few you. tweaks and a bit of help, and I think they'll be just fine. Yeah. Oh, that's brilliant. Thank cool. you. Cool. It's good awesome. to hear that because, like I say, you think you're not doing everything right. I know. But... It's so hard, isn't <laughs> it? It is. Definitely. But you are. You're doing a great job with them. Yeah, so, you. and sometimes these things come, you know, you can't necessarily predict when these things are going to happen. No. And you've just done the best you can with the knowledge you've got. Yeah. So that's all anyone can do, really. Yeah. So, you know, we'll Thank tweak you. these things and then. Uh, I'm sure you'll be just fine. Yeah, thank you very much. Awesome. So when it comes to Bonnie's reactivity to strangers and Clyde's fixation on lights and shadows, we've helped to put a really good plan in place for Kelly. Remember that behaviours like chasing lights and shadows or any kind of repetitive obsessive behaviour will need a vet check and potentially a referral to a veterinary behaviourist. For more information, read the description below and don't forget to subscribe. We'll be posting new videos every Sunday.